The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. It is entitled, Cage Boy. It is night. The Clyde Beatty trained wild animal circus has just begun a week's engagement in Cleveland, with the first evening's performance completed less than an hour ago. And now in the cat barn where the lions and tigers are caged, Hey, hold up there, kid. What are you doing in here? Well, I'm looking for Mr. Beatty, a man outside. He ain't here. I don't know if he will be or not. What do you want with him? I wanted to see him about a job. I thought he might have... You wanted to see him about a job, a punk like you? (laughs) What could you do around the circus? I could be a cage boy, couldn't I? You couldn't even feed peanuts to the elephants. I'm a cage boy. When Mr. Beatty hires anybody, he wants him dry behind the ears. Now run along. I'm going to wait and ask him for myself. You giving me an argument? No, but... Then come on, get moving out of here. Hey, hey, you let go of me. Vito! Hello, Mr. Beatty. Hey, this this nosy lot louse had the nerve to bust in here and ask for a job. He tried to give me an argument. I told him to... You doing the hiring and firing for this show now, Zeno? No, it ain't that, Mr. Beatty, but... Then you'd better be careful you don't give the impression that you are. Hello there. So you're looking for a job with the circus, are you? Not a circus, Mr. Beatty. Yours. I like animals. (laughs) Well, then you've come to the right place. We carry more than any other circus in the world. What's your name, son? Jimmy, sir. Jimmy Trotter. Jimmy, eh? Well, Jimmy, what do you think you could do? The punk thinks he could be a cage boy. Take a suggestion, Zeno. Stay out of this. Any experience, Jimmy? Oh, yes, sir. Lots, Mr. Beatty. I... Oh... Well, no, I haven't. I was going to say I had, Mr. Beatty, but I haven't. I... Good. I'm glad to hear it. You're smarter not to lie to me. I'd rather break in my own cage, boys. You mean maybe I can get a job, Mr. Beatty? You think... Why you not? To... We can try you out anyway. Come back first thing in the morning and look up Pete Schultz, my assistant. Tell him I said to put you on the payroll. We'll see what you can do. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Beatty. Hey, look here, I... Mr. Beatty. You got all the cage boys you need. You hire this lousy first the mayor, and whose place he gonna take? You know darn well he's the... going to take yours. Huh? Well, say, listen here. Don't you... argue with me, Zeno. You've been found mistreating the animals time after time. Now I'm giving you an order on the paymaster for two weeks' pay, but I'll expect you off the lot by morning. Understand that, Zeno? Yeah, what do I care? I was gonna quit anyway. Good. Then we're both satisfied. Good night, Jimmy. I'll expect to see you early tomorrow. I'll be here real early. And thanks, Mr. Beatty. Forget it. Gee, I'm, I'm kind of sorry about this, Zeno. I wanted a job, but I didn't want to get you fired. I Don't worry, you didn't. You ain't that important. Oh, sure not. I just thought... That... Anyhow, maybe Beatty's going to be sorry he let me go. What do you mean? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> We return to the story of Cage Boy after this message. And now, back to the Clyde Beatty Show. Jimmy Trotter is 16, and the biggest dream of his life is to someday become a wild animal trainer. He was delighted when Mr. Beatty told him to report to work as a cage boy. For he now is working with the greatest wild animal trainer of them all, Clyde Beatty. Back, Nero. Back. All right, Pasha. Jump. Jump, girl. Good. 
Good girl. All right, Pete. I'm through. Open the runway. Let them back to their cages. I'm coming out. Right, Mr. Brady. All set, Mr. Brady. Good. I'm coming out through the safety cage. Well, how did it look, Pete? I thought they looked fine, Mr. Brady. Another week and they ought to be ready for your act. Has she looked all right to you? Sure. Why? You think she didn't? Uh, I thought she acted kind of sluggish. May not be anything, though. By the way, that boy I sent you this morning, Jimmy Trotter, how do you like him? He's a good boy, Mr. Brady. He's going to make out fine. Even offered to help me work my big polar bear act. He's in the cat barn now. <laughs> Funny thing, though, I keep thinking I ought to know, Jimmy. Looks to me like somebody I've seen before. But you can't place him, huh? No, I... I guess he just reminds me of somebody else. Probably does. I... Hey, it's your wife, Mr. Beatty. Oh. Hello, Harriet. You want me? Don't you think it's time we had something to eat? <laughs> I guess it is. I forgot. I Mr. was... Mr. Beatty! Mr. Beatty! What's that? Sounds like Jimmy. Mr. Beatty, something's happened. Something's happened? It's that big tiger of yours, Mr. Beatty. It's Pasha. What about Pasha? What is it? I... I think she's dead. <laughs> Pash is dead, all right, Jimmy. And unless I'm very much mistaken, she's been poisoned. Poisoned, Mr. Beatty? I think so, Pete. Oh, that's impossible. Of course it's impossible, Harriet, but this is the time the impossible happened. I can't believe it. Jimmy, I'll have to ask you a few questions. We want to get to the bottom of this. Have you any idea how this might have happened? No one came in here this afternoon who shouldn't have been here? No one I noticed, sir. How about her feeding? You took care of that, didn't you, Pete? Well, that's right, Mr. Beatty. I fed her at 4 o'clock just like always. Didn't notice anything wrong with her then. And I fed her the same meat I gave all the others. If it was the meat was poisoned, they ought to be dead, too. That's right. I can't understand this. Well, neither can I. Who in the world would do a thing like this? I can think of one man, Clyde. Who's that? Kegler. Oh, that's He's not... He's been out of jail for over a year now. He's trainer with the Thorndike show. Excuse he... me, Mrs. Beatty. Wasn't it you sent Kegler to jail, Mr. Beatty? Oh, I had nothing to do with it, Pete. I just... He thought you did, Clyde. Kegler's always been jealous of you, and after that incident, he hated you. What was it happened? Oh, it was nothing much, Pete. Not my part of it. Kegler had a vicious temper. He tried to kill a Joey once, and I stopped him. Afterwards, the clown brought charges against him, and he served a jail sentence. Yeah, but in that case... Wait a second. I've got it now. That's where I saw the kid. No wonder his face was familiar. I... Well... Ah, well, that's something else again, Mr. Beatty. Got nothing to do with this. I... What is it, Pete? You're referring to Jimmy, aren't you? Uh, look, Mr. Beatty, He I... is, Mr. Beatty. I... I guess now he remembers where he saw me before. Yes? Where was that? With... With another circus. When I said I hadn't had any experience, I... I lied to you. I... You say you were with another circus. What circus was that? The Thorndike outfit, Mr. Beatty. I worked for Mr. Kegler. <laughs> Jimmy, I knew it couldn't be very pleasant for you talking in front of the others. That's why I suggested we take a ride. Now let's hear your side of it. All right. I was ashamed to tell you the truth, Mr. Beatty. You see, I was fired. Why? Well, Mr. Kegler and I got into an argument. Then you didn't get a job with me at his suggestion. Oh, no, sir, Mr. Beatty. I wouldn't have done a thing like that for anything. You've got to believe me. I want to believe you, Jimmy. Thanks, Mr. Beatty. But for my own protection, I've got to check on you. I've got to know whether or not you've told me the truth this time. I want you to check on me. I will. I have a friend with the Thorndike shows, Dave Seeley. I'll wire him tonight. Mr. Schultz. Oh, hello there, Jimmy. How are you? Oh, not so good, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Beatty said he was going to wire a friend to see whether or not Mr. Kegler fired me, like I said. You... You know if he's gotten an answer yet? No, I don't think he has. Oh. But don't let that worry you, Jimmy. Not if you are telling the truth. You're working for a real man now. Oh, I know that, Mr. Schultz. I like him. I I want to keep on working for him. Yeah, and I reckon you will. 
Anything else you want to see me about? No, sir. That was all. Yeah, then I'll see you later. I got my own act to rehearse. Take it easy, Jim. Oh, sure. What's the matter? Losing your appetite, kid? Hmm? Oh, oh, Zeno. Yeah, sure. You look kind of sick. That what poisoning cats does to you? You better get out of here, Zeno. If Mr. Beatty catches you here, I'll make you wish you'd never heard of a circus. You or me? Huh? Look over there, kid. What? No, no, not there. Nero's cage. I, I don't see any. You better take a closer look. Nero's dead. Hello? Mr. Clyde Beatty, please. Speaking. This is Western Union calling, Mr. Beatty. We just received a night letter addressed to you, signed by Mr. David Seeley. Oh, yes, I've been waiting for that. This is the message. Your wire received. Have investigated the boy Jimmy Trotter as you requested. Trotter was employed by Kegler of the Thorndike shows. He was discharged shortly afterward when Kegler discovered him trying to poison one of his cats. Signed, David Seeley. Thank you. A copy of this message will be delivered to you, Mr. Beatty. Yes, thank you very much. Well, that's that. Might as well find Jimmy and... Wait. Wait a second. Operator? Give me Western Union, please. Good afternoon, Western Union. This is Clyde Beatty. Did you just now phone me with a message from Mr. David Seeley? Why, yes, sir. Was there any question about it? No. No question. I just wanted to check, that's all. Thank you again. That's quite all right. Well. Well, now to see Jimmy. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but there's no use arguing about it. I'll have to let you go. Then you do think I poisoned those cats, don't you, Mr. Beatty? No, as long as I have no proof, I'm not allowing myself to think anything about that, Jimmy. I'm letting you go for another reason. What is it? You didn't tell me the truth the second time either. About how you lost your job with Kegler. Or rather, you didn't tell me the whole truth. What do you mean? I've heard from my friend. The telegraph office phoned and gave me his message that Kegler fired you. Because he suspected you of poisoning one of his cats. That isn't true. My friend wouldn't lie to me, Jimmy. But it isn't. I ought to know. I... Wait a minute. You said the telegraph office phoned you that? How do you know it was a telegraph office? How do you know it wasn't a trick? Because I thought of that and called back. Oh. The telegram was authentic. Anything more to say, Jimmy? Mr. Beatty, what can I say? Nothing, I'm afraid, Jimmy. So I'll have to tell you what I told Zeno. Pack your things and be off the lot by morning. You hear that? Yes, sir. Off the lot by morning. <laughs> We'll bring you the second act of the exciting Clyde Beatty show in just one moment. And now, back to our thrilling Clyde Beatty drama, Cage Boy. Young Jimmy Trotter, newly hired cage boy, has been suspected of poisoning two of Clyde Beatty's famous and valuable jungle cats. Clyde has taken a liking to the boy, but when he receives word that Jimmy lost his last position under almost identical circumstances, he feels forced to let him go. And now, in his private car with Harriet, his wife. Clyde? Oh. What, dear? You're not listening to me. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Harriet. I guess I've still got Jimmy on my mind. You had to let him go, didn't you? Well, I guess so. Of course you did. How could you take any more chances? If he poisoned any more, you wouldn't have an act. You're just sorry for him because you were a cage boy once. <laughs> I haven't felt sorry for Zeno. Now, he was different. Exactly my point. Jimmy, you... Oh, I'll get it. Yes? I'll sign for it. Here you are. 
for you, Clive. Oh, just a copy of what they read me over the phone, I guess. Maybe you misunderstood it. Maybe... No, it says the same thing. Kegler fired him because he suspected him of... Wait a minute. Hmm? Look at this. What? The top line. Mr. Clyde Beatty, care of Clyde Beatty Circus, Lake... No, no, no. I I mean, look where this was piled. Cleveland. You mean this was sent from here in the city? Exactly. And the Thorndike shows are in Memphis. Well, then what on earth? Somebody's framed, Jimmy. Oh, but I don't... We can talk about it later, Harriet, but right now I've got to find the kid. You know whether or not he's left the lot yet? Yes, I saw him leave. Zeno was outside and he stopped in to talk to him. Zeno? Harriet, did they leave together? I'm not sure, but I think they did. I... Clyde, where are you going? To find them, Harriet. I hope I'm not too late. You want another cup of java, kid? No, I've had enough, Zeno. I better go look for a room. All right, let's go then. Hey, here's your money, Mac. Not this way, Jimmy. Hey, go ahead. Well, thanks for the coffee, Zeno. I'm glad you're not sore at me anymore. It's something to be glad about, I guess. Why should I be sore? <laughs> Neither one of us got a job with Beatty anymore, have we? Hey, look, kid. It's pretty late to be looking for a room to rent this time of night. I got a room right near here. Why not stay with me? Oh, I, I wouldn't want to do that, Zeno. I mean... Ah, sure. Come on, why not? Well... Don't worry about being comfortable, kid. I'll make you comfortable. I'll make you real comfortable. Yeah, mister, something for you? Yes, I'm looking for a boy named Jimmy Trotter, a boy about 16 years old. I was told he came in here. Have you seen him? Oh, lots of kids come in here. I pay them no attention. Look, this boy wasn't alone. He was with another young fellow in his early 20s. Uh Uh-huh, but I don't ask him their age, and I don't ask him their names either. All right. Sorry. I'm just anxious to find the boy, that's all. Wait a second. Who was sitting in this booth here? Oh, how should I know? What's eating you now? Look at this. Huh? What's that? It's a copy of Billboard. It belongs to Jimmy. Look here, you see? It has his name on it. Oh, so the kid knows how to write. So what? I'll tell you what, mister. You'd better do some remembering. What happened? Oh, well, right after they went out of here, I... I reckon they had a fight. I, I heard something, so I reckon they had a fight. They, uh... Didn't you go outside to see? It wasn't none of my business, as long as they were outside. I... You know, I just didn't want no nosy cops nosing around, that's all. <laughs> I get it. You've had trouble with the police, huh? Well, what if I have? What's that to you? Nothing, my friend. But the next time you're asked a question, give an honest answer and give it fast. Good night. Why? Here he is. What are you doing down here? Oh, oh! I've been waiting here at the gate ever since you left. Did you find them? Not a trace of them, Harriet. Oh, I don't understand why you're so worried. When I said not a trace of them, I didn't mean quite that. I did trace them to a restaurant down the street. I talked to the owner. He remembered them. He remembered they're going out. And then... Then what? He thought he heard a fight. Oh. The darn fool didn't go outside right away to look, and when he did, they were gone. He said that he... What's that? The cat barn. Not the cat barn, Harriet. The big top. Somebody's let those cats into the arena. There's trouble, Harriet. Come on. the runway. I'm going to drive them back. I'm coming, Jimmy. Stand right where you are. I'm coming. Now, don't move, Jimmy. Back there. Back. Back, Sophie. Get back there, Jimmy. Over. 
Through, Mr. Betty. Good. Here. Make a tourniquet out of my shirt. Yeah, that'll do it. Mr. Betty, why do you think Zeno did this? Zeno? You've seen him? Yeah, I saw him. I bumped into him running out of here just as I was coming in. I let him have it and dumped him outside. Reckon he's still there now. Fine. I want to ask that lad some questions. Uh, he's in for it now. How much time do you think you'll get, Mr. Betty? Zeno? I shouldn't think he'd get any. Huh? Why not? Why should he? What's he done? What's he done? Jump in Jupiter, Mr. Beatty. He poisoned your cats, tried to kill Jimmy. No, he didn't, Pete. Huh? Well, then if he didn't, who did? You really want to know? Well, why shouldn't I? All right, then I'll tell you, Pete. You did. Huh? And I... No, you don't. You'll stay right here. You're the one who's guilty, Pete, and you're the one who'll pay. <laughs> The doc says just one more week here in the hospital, Jimmy, and you can rejoin the show. And we'll celebrate with the party. Oh, gee, this is fine. This is swell. But, but Mr. Beatty, was it really Peter Schultz that poisoned your cats and locked me in the cage? He's confessed. He's in jail now, awaiting trial. From the big top to the big house. But I don't see why... I imagine there are lots of things you don't see, Jimmy. And one of them was Pete when he knocked you out outside that restaurant. He did that before you had a chance to get a look at him. Afterwards, he had a fight with Zeno. That's what the restaurant owner heard. He knocked Zeno out, too, and put you both in his car. But but you didn't know all that until afterwards. How, how'd you guess it was him in the first place, Mr. Beatty? I knew it because he was a trainer. Huh? Clyde means that no trainer would have taken a rifle to those cats, Jimmy. He would have gone into the cage himself, as Clyde did. Peter Schultz put you in that cage while you were unconscious, so he'd have an excuse to shoot those cats. But, but why? For the same reason he poisoned Pasha and Nero. Too much ambition. With my act destroyed, we'd have had to feature his. And featuring his polar bear act on the Clyde Beatty Circus would have made a star of Peter Schultz. Oh, gee, your act isn't ruined, is it, Mr. Beatty? No, Jimmy. Not by a long ways. Nero and Pasha can be replaced. They weren't in the act yet. And the others were only wounded. They'll soon be as good as ever. Oh, that's swell. And speaking of wires, Jimmy. Hmm? That first telegram about you was handed into the telegraph office by Pete right here in Cleveland. Since then, the real answer has come. We heard from Dave Seeley yesterday. Now we know why Kegler fired you. Oh, do you? We do. You found him beating one of his animals and tried to stop him. And took a beating yourself? Isn't that so? Well... Well, in this case, we know it's so, Jimmy. And for our money, you can have a job with the Clyde Beatty Circus for as long as you'd like. Brief but important message, then an exciting preview of next week's Clyde Beatty drama. Here is a suspenseful preview of the next Clyde Beatty adventure. By Joe, my eyes weren't deceiving me. Beatty, you rascal. Good to see you again. Well, Sanders, how have you been? First rate, thanks. What brings you to Rangoon? Oh, just stopping over for a few days on the way to Bengal. Going to try to round up some young tigers. Oh? Well, why go all the way to Bengal for tigers? We've got more than enough of the blasted things right here in Burma. Really? Our teak plantation up near Tangu has had quite a plague with one in particular. Well, what's the trouble? 
Well, there's a giant tiger on the rampage in that district. Biggest the natives have ever seen. Only not many of them have lived to tell about it. You see, he's turned man-eater. Well, what's on your mind, Sanders? Well, supposing I were to authorize my plantation foreman to turn over all the natives and equipment you might need for capturing a dozen tigers at no cost to you whatever. What would you say to that? <laughs> I'd say there's a catch in it somewhere. <laughs> there is. First, you'd have to rid the place of that man-eater. You've made yourself a deal. Good. Just like that where you've signed that tiger's death warrant. I was just thinking if that tiger's as big as you say... Clyde, you're not thinking Exactly, of... Sanders. I'm not signing his death warrant. I'm going to take him alive. That was the way it started, our adventure with the man-eater of Burma. And the ending? That took me through one of the most terrifying experiences in my life. I'll tell you all about it the next time we visit. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Cage Boy was written by Gibson Scott Fox. This story was based upon incidents from the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. However, all names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.